This video will guide you through some basic troubleshooting steps that you may need after your initial setup of your water heater, specifically talking about if your water heater clicks but will not light or lights but shortly goes out. At this point your unit should be mounted and your water supply and return and gas supply lines should all be connected. First we will check the batteries that supply power to the unit. We will want to check that the batteries are installed with the correct polarity. Please note that the polarity of the batteries is marked on the inner side of the door to the battery compartment. If at this time you do not hear an audible clicking when water is running through the unit, then please first watch the video Power Gas Troubleshooting Part 1 before moving further. At this point, your unit should be clicking when water runs through it and the digital temperature screen should light up if applicable. There is a sensor that will shut off the ignition sequence if no flame is detected. Try cycling the unit on a couple times to purge any air in the gas line out. Next, confirm you have appropriate gas pressure, which is a minimum of 0.41 psi or 11 inches of water column. Lastly, check the connection with soapy water or glass cleaner for a leak. Bubbles will form if a leak is present. Please correct and retest if necessary. If the problem persists, our next step will be to remove the front cover. Here we are showing a 10 liter. There will be 4 screws on top and 2 on bottom. The 5 liter has 2 screws on top and 2 on bottom. And lastly, the 16 liter only has 2 screws on the bottom. Remember to disconnect the 2 clips for the digital display if applicable. Now, locate the gas solenoid. It will be located on the gas valve in the lower left hand corner. Next, locate the micro switch. It is a small black rectangle with two wires coming from the left hand side, located on the bottom side of the brass water valve, near the bottom center of the heater. Use your finger or a flathead screwdriver to lift the metal tab away from the micro switch manually. As you lift the micro switch, you will want to listen for the sound of the solenoid opening. It's a distinctive loud clacking noise. As you keep the micro switch open for roughly 20 seconds, you will hear the solenoid close. It will be a softer thump noise. You can amplify these sounds by holding the tip of a screwdriver on the solenoid and lightly resting your ear on the base of the screwdriver handle. Here is an example of a malfunctioning gas solenoid. The solenoid plunger should stay in the open position for roughly 15 seconds. As you can see here, it is immediately resetting to the closed position. If this is the case, then confirm all electrical connections are firmly connected, especially the black clip connecting the solenoid and also the connections on the overheat protection sensor. Here we have shown the action of the plunger by removing the solenoid, but we do not recommend that you remove the gas solenoid unless you believe, based on the test, that it is not functioning properly and needs to be replaced. If you did remove the gas solenoid, then upon reinstallation, please make sure you did not lose the gasket that seals the connection between the base of the solenoid and the gas valve itself. Next, look at your igniters to make sure you are getting spark at the tip where it meets the top of the burner assembly. If you hear the clicking but do not see the spark at the tip of the igniter, it is possible that the spark is occurring towards the bottom by the wire, and you will need to push the thick black wire that connects the igniters further onto the connection pin. If your unit clicks and lights but goes out within approximately 15 seconds, then the first thing you will want to check is the wire that connects the thermocouple sensor. This sensor is the longer sensor that protrudes over the burner assembly and should have a thick black wire with a blue piece of tape on it. Please make sure that this wire is connected securely. 
If it is not, then you can pull the wire from the sensor and trim approximately 1 8 to a quarter inch off the tip of the wire and reconnect it to the sensor to give it a nice fresh connection. Another very distinctive behavior that indicates a bad connection to the thermal couple sensor is that while the flame is lit, the unit continues to click like it is trying to ignite. If you have a Marae 5 liter portable unit, there is another sensor that could be causing the unit to light and then shut down shortly after, usually about 30 to 45 seconds. This sensor is the oxygen deprivation sensor seen here. The sensor is mounted to the front of the heat exchanger and has two orange wires running from it. Sometimes in manufacturing or shipping, this sensor gets pushed in too far. It needs to be adjusted by pulling the sensor out with a screwdriver or pliers to where it is about a quarter to a half inch above the hole that it is mounted over. Mm -hmm.